My name is Professor Zoe Knowles. I'm from the School of Sport and Exercise Sciences at Liverpool John Moores University. I'm a Professor of Engagement and Learning and also a HCPC registered Sport and Exercise Psychologist. And the first thing I see is um, the goat's head. That immediately stands out. Um, firstly, the expression, the teeth, and then uh, the, the horns at, at the top. That's where my attention's first drawn. And then moving across to the, to the bottle and the candle. And I don't think I would necessarily have associated that with a candle if it hadn't been in the description. I think that I struggle with the connection between the three, the three items and again in the description where it talks about death and some profound events that impacted on, um, on, on the artwork, I, I can st start to, to see that. Um, but I think it was the, the, the connection and when I looked at the bottle, for example, the, the dot here, whether that was a reflection of the goat's head in the in the bottle on the basis that bottles are, are, are glass and usually you can see some um, reflection and the angles as well whether it had picked up the angles from the from the goat's head as as well um, but I still struggle a little bit with the candle at the top. I think for me it was the background it was the background story um, having seen it on on the wall and I had a look at it online when it was when it was sent through to me you don't appreciate the, the texture the lines the shade until you get until you get up close and I do think you need to get up, you know get up close to be able to to see that so it's 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 the different shades the the lines and what that represents the shape of the bottle as well it isn't a mainstream kind of bottle um, shape certainly the detail around the the, the, the goat's head um, and the, the teeth and, and at the front, I could see that really, really, really clearly. Um, and the, the, different, the different lines, it's not all straight lines, which is what I imagined Picasso to be. There's, there's, cur you know, there's curved lines and perhaps in places where I wouldn't normally expect there to, to be curved lines. Um, so I see a great use of, uh, you know, a use of colour and it, it's totally different standing back from it than, than actually being up front uh, here and um, seeing the brush strokes and, and, and things as well. So very, very different when you're close to when you're standing away. I think if you take my position as a, as a sports psychologist, um, when I read the background, when I looked at, at the image, there was, there was two things that, that stood out really, that this was inspired by, by death. Um, and, and death is a life event that happens to us all, you know, um, it, it's, ju it's just one of those things. And a lot of my work is supporting athletes around critical life events or critical moments. And death is one of those that will happen to everyone. But actually when you're working with, with athletes, um, a, a lot of events are individual to them. So whereas we might perceive that something is quite, is quite trivial, um, a row with a partner or you know some money worries or things may be trivial to some people actually for some athletes that's that's really quite um, impactful and um, can be quite destroying in terms of their ability to be able to cope with life events so th this, this represents one life event that's that happens that we all have to unfortunately learn, learn to, to deal with but it made me start to question the life events that I've worked with athletes so over over time that to other people might seem quite quite trivial but but actually to them are often a very you know a, a discrete moment in time can be quite profound quite impactful and quite negative um, the other thing was this issue of, of reflection in the bottle and whether it was anything that was here that was coming from from the goat's head. My, my research area is around reflective practice and understanding. I always start from the premise of looking at a reflection in a mirror or a reflection in a lake and whether that is a true reflection of, of what's going on. And, and actually we would look at that reflection with a sense of, of our own perceptions, which can be distorted. Um, and sometimes we need challenging in that reflection. So I'm not even sure whether that was what was 
what was there to be to be gleaned from from this but certainly reflection and perhaps with the the light from the candle as well how that would change the the, the reflection in terms of the the light on the goat's head whether that would make any difference to the reflection that may be picked up from what i assume to be a glass bottle i don't know whether I could string it all into a title but maybe a, a, a few sets of words so um, I would see this as being a critical life event. I would see reflection in there. I would see light. I would see whether the change in light um, helps, to, helps us to look or to reflect differently on a critical life event. I think the science is I think the science is there in, from a psychologist's point of view in trying to understand grief, trying to understand death and the, pro and the process by, by which that, that happens, how people see death. So if, if this depicts um, death and that's reflected through a typical reflection in a bottle, maybe distorted through, through, the, candle, through the candlelight, that actually the way that we deal with, with grief, the way that we deal with, with critical life events um, can change from moment to moment, I think. And that, certainly when I'm working with athletes, often um, you don't kind of intervene in the same way every time you see them. They will interpret, they will interpret an experience from moment to moment. It can be literally seconds later. It's, you know, they see it differently. They feel it differently. It's got more intense. That they've almost got to a more pragmatic position. They're moving through a process by which they deal with deal with experience, and and, and that's what I thought was here. Um, yeah, I think it will. I've I've been around this art gallery myself with my children and uh, and my mum and. Walking around, you naturally gravitate to certain type to certain types of art, um, but it was more to do with my children who would do it, who were looking at Picasso at the time when they were in primary school and things like that. I've never really thought about looking at it from a scientific point of view. Um, I don't honestly know whether I would have been able to to pick up things that I have without the description and un understanding. And I think that relates to my role as a psychologist, that I have to understand the person in order to be able to do my job. And I have to spend time getting to know them and that they have to know that, that I care about them. So I wouldn't be convinced that I would be able to have, have explained to you what I have today just by standing in front of it. I would need, I would need the text. So perhaps I would spend more time reading the text around and, and not necessarily be drawn to the picture, actually go to the small boards of text and read that first, I think. So it would change the way that I would engage in an art gallery, I think. I'm a huge fan of the MA Art in Science. Uh, I have been since it, um, since it was sort of first muted as, as an idea. And I think sports science and certainly the areas that, that I work in, it has real currency, particularly working with um, my, my role in, in engagement of science. So how do we translate our work that we do in very sophisticated labs, complex systems, dealing with people, organisations, life experiences, how do we translate that to the public? And we do struggle in that in science and there's some great work going on, but the public don't know, don't know about it and, and to engage them I think there is definitely a role for art in science.